Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. So, on the bench today, another repair. Um, lovely old communications receiver, this one. An old Trio R1000. Okay, this handle's a bit tricky. Yeah, so there we are. Um, lovely old receiver, probably, I don't know what this is, probably 70s, 80s. I will we'll get the information on it in a minute. It's a bit dusty because it was packed in a load of polystyrene and no um, no wrapper, so I need to give that a bit of a clean off. But yes, uh, apparently this one's had a bit of a fall. It's a heavy, heavy unit. It's obviously got a mains transformer in there. Um, so I'm suspecting something's happened inside, like the circuit board's broken. So a load more of this polystyrene here, look. I'll have to take that out and blow it out in a minute. But yeah, it could be that the circuit board is cracked, or one of the boards has um, come loose. It has got a 12, well, 13.8 volt input, so I might uh, power it up on that to start with, but... Uh, I think before we put any power on it at all, I'm going to need to get it out of the case just to have a look, see if there's anything obvious that's happened with it. So uh, bear with me, I'll get the uh, manual for it and we'll start pulling it apart. Okay, just unscrewed the six screws to each side and two at the back to hold the bottom cover on. So let's uh, see if I can get that off. There we go. One bottom cover. Okay, let's have a look uh, inside then just to see if there is anything uh, obvious to start with. The well, transformer is bolted down to the metal chassis, so that's good news. Nothing that I can see obvious there really. Very similar to that um, Yesu I had in actually. Must be the same sort of era. Everything looks to be intact this side of the board. So power supply board there. That um, cap is a bit bowed there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that should be flat. That's bowed up a little bit. It uses separate diodes rather than or diodes as a bridge rectifier. There's a little probably voltage regulator in there. A couple of big transistors. Okay, yeah, as I say, at the moment, nothing obvious jumping out at me. So I'm just going to get my magnifying light in and have a closer look in a minute. So uh, saying you won't be able to see it when I get this thing in, so uh, bear with me. Okay, nothing untoward that I can see. Just going to um, get the fuse out and have a look. As I say, I've not powered this up yet, so this is purely a first investigation. Okay, fuse looks okay, but I'll have a go by looks. Let's get the multimeter in. Let's quickly put it on. Continuity buzzer. in the wrong holes. Uh, 
Okay, that one's fine. 500 milliamps, which is, I would have thought, the right size. Fuse. Actually, that's a bit high. So that's, it should be 0.4, so 400 milliamps. So it's a slightly high. I thought that would make a massive amount of difference, 100 milliamps. Well, let's put one back in. Right. As I say, I can't see anything wrong in there. No wires hanging off. Everything looks intact. So I can't see any visible signs of a crack on that board. Um, this will be the PLO board on the back here. Very well made sets of this era. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, hello. There is something loose in there. Just a bit of something broke there. Save that bit. Bit of plastic. Looks like off of one of these screws. Could be in the other side. Right, let's flip him over and get this side off for a minute. Okay, that's the screws out of the top panel. Be careful here because the speaker's still connected. If you'll come off. They should come off. doesn't look so good in here, right. Just take a quick picture of which way around those speaker wires go. Okay, we're going to go for a bit of shaky cam here because um, let's just get you in a little bit closer, have a look at some of the things that I've seen so far. Um, first of all is in this area, we've got um, that transistor there, Q16. Looks like it's had a rough time. Um, also, there looks to be a little bit of uh, damage to the. It's like a little resistor in there as well. Oh, a little bit too close. And this wire that goes over to the what looks like a PLL chip. Actually, no, that's the um, display chip. I would think goes back over here. We can see the end of it. it looks to to be quite badly burnt. So we've got some burning on the board, or some burning there, but I mean if you can see all these little trimmers, you can see where a screwdriver's been in, in all of those. As I say, I've not touched this yet, this is just an initial look. Um, so yeah, you can see the marks where screwdrivers have been in there. But um, this one's interesting. You can see the uh, ferrite core in that one is is actually broken. That and just moving up here, We've got another ferrite core there's broken. If I can actually get the light on, there we go. Yeah, so there's another ferrite core there broken. Again, all these look to have had screwdrivers in. But um, there's some pretty horrific soldering in here, and I'm really not sure why. <clears throat> if you look at, um, for example, some of the test points, if I can find one. Yeah, there, that test point 
three that's had solder on it for some reason um, let's see if I can find some of these resistors now I think what could have happened is this set could have been modified at some stage and someone's reverted it back to standard possibly I don't know um, coming back along this way then um, we've got a little bit of the plastic broken on that connector there I need to get that apart this sort of lines on the board is um, just where something spilled on it I think so yeah definitely that connector's broken um, that looks like it's been glued back in place that slug ferrite core but yeah the interesting thing is some of these um, resistors uh, where are we trying to get my bearings <laughs> right, going over this way a bit yeah I mean look at that I don't know what's happened there but um, looks like the resistor has been cut and resoldered somehow um, there's a burnt, burnt looking resistor there there's a very blobby solder job there another dodgy solder job there yeah I really don't know again the test point there that that's had some solder on it I mean, why would you solder test points unless you, I suppose you could be connecting your test kit onto them yeah moving up through come up we've got our filters there look quite nice that's got the ceramic filter with nice nice filters in it but um, yeah going off to the left we've got another one of those um, horrible solder joints there it's riddled with resistors that have been cut and soldered back on there's a diode in there as well with the same issue you can just see it more resistors up up this way that have been got up by the looks of it yeah they're all looking pretty ropey uh, I did sort of check all these connectors and um, there was one up there by the display board uh, that one was loose so I pushed that back on it was it was making contact I'm sure it was but I've just uh, pushed that back on so yeah and in order to have a look at this lot let's see if I can get you uh, a bit closer yeah this area here I'm going to need to whip the um, board out unfortunately because that looks like it's a major job to get the board out of this thing um, so yeah I thought I'd show you some of my initial findings certainly we've got a, a couple cores broken there um, I wouldn't have a ferrite that small I don't think so I can't replace it the only way I suppose is to take them off the board and um, screw them out from the bottom and just reverse them you should still be able to trim them up but uh, yeah this one's going to be a lot of work I think so um, I really don't know the history of this set. So, someone's definitely had a good old play with, with this side of the board. Um, it's been modified to do something, I'm sure. But, uh, 
we've got Elna Elna capacitors, that one feels very loose that one's very very loose So yeah, I think the um, the first job's going to be taking the this um, main board out and having a look. Let's say the PLL board on the other side looks fine. It's this side that's um, worrying. So join me in a bit, and uh, I'll have a look at how to get this thing out of its uh, out of the chassis. Okay, welcome back to Shaky Camp. Just a couple other things I've noticed. Um, we've got some, I, mean, I haven't touched these, but it looks like sleeve-ins dropped down. It's got a couple bare connectors there, there's another one, so there's three wires there that have been taken apart and joined. Um, and similar over here. I didn't notice that when I looked initially, but, yeah, oh dear. So someone's put bits of sleeve in, but not shrink sleeve. So yeah, this this set has been hacked about. Yeah, I didn't notice that first off, but there you are. Just thought I'd show you. 